Howdy guys, welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. Today, we're gonna to be trying to put together this game winner tripod stand. It's a 10 foot tripod stand. I'm gonna try and do it by myself. Yesterday, my dad, brother, and I put together a, a two person quad pod from game winner as well. That one, you really needed two to three people to do it. This one, I think you can get away with one person and I really haven't seen any reviews or people talk about how to put it together or build it on YouTube. So I figured I'd show you the process and how to put it together and, and see how it works. So what you're gonna need for this, it comes with wrenches, but to make it a little bit easier, you'll probably want to get a ratchet and a better wrench. And the quad pod used 7 16 I'm guessing this uses the same. I'll let you know if it's anything different. But let's go ahead and open it up and get started. So that is your instruction booklet here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull everything out. Uh, everything's individually labeled, one through whatever number step. So we'll go ahead and pull these out. I will also say if you can keep all your pieces in the shade for now, that'd be good. It's about 100 degrees out here, so it's pretty toasty. And once they're in the sun, they're pretty hot to touch and you almost need gloves to work with them. So what's really nice with Game Winner is they give you a bag full of all of your screws and each bag has a step number on them. And so when you get to that step, you just go ahead and pull it out and that's all you need for that specific step, which is pretty nice. Just to give you an idea of what these look like. So these are the wrenches they come with. They're not very good, so I've got a ratchet and another wrench for my own set. And so here's the bags. I don't know if y'all can see that, but they have the steps labeled on each one. So step one is the platform. The directions seem to show you exactly the way to put it get together, which is really nice. So in these instructions, it doesn't really say it. On the uh, quad pod, it talks about it a little bit more. But you don't want to necessarily tighten everything really tight right away. Usually I like to get it pretty close, and then as you add things, you may need to move and maneuver the pieces a little bit. So I, I'd get it you know, each step kind of look and see what, you know, the next step is going to be. That'll give you an idea of whether you think you can tighten it down or not. So for this first step, I'm not going to really tighten it down too much because I can see that I'm going to need to move it maybe a little bit to get the next step installed. Step two is installing the seat post. We're installing the ladder supports here in step three. For this one, I don't think you want to tighten them down until you get all the screws in it because it kind of sits up a little bit and it's hard to get that screw in there. Step four leg supports. So on these leg supports, it doesn't really show in the pictures, kind of hard to see, but you want, you know, it's a tripod, you don't want it facing in, your legs facing in, so your legs are going to face where the angle goes outward here, so make sure you do that. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is the back rail uprights. And so this is going to go on the back side, not the ladder side, and it'll go all the way around these three spots here. 
That's what these little hanging down tabs are for. So this step has a 5A and a B. I think it's because you have longer screws for the top holes and smaller ones for the bottom. And there seems to be three holes on these legs. It looks like you want to use the bottom too. So 6A and B are kind of the same concept. You have a longer screw and a shorter screw. These are your front rail uprights here. You'll do the big screw, which is 6A for the top one and 6B for the bottom one. So I made a little mistake here. I put it on the last hole. Part number eight should go on this inner hole. And you'll have one hole to spare. And something that may have made this part a little bit easier is if I didn't tighten these uh, poles in the previous steps, although I'm not having too much of an issue getting these to line up. Careful not to over tighten these because you can start to see the metal pieces deforming and, and crunching together if you tighten it too much, so don't over tighten them. Step eight is the front rail, this guy here. So this one has a, uh, an angled and a flat side. It looks like, based on the picture, you want the flat side facing up here. They also give you four washers. And so you need a washer on the outside, and then in between, and then in between, and on the other outside. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just throwing this bolt in there to hold it up and help me out like somebody else is over there holding it. And I'm gonna do this side first. Now we are doing the ladder. It looks like you take this bracket and that's how you connect your ladder pieces together. So it looks like for this uh, smaller screw, a 10 millimeters is your best bet. It looks like the C is facing inside is the way they did it. Step 10, we're jumping to the other two leg sections. So we're on step 11 now. Looks like the lower ladder section. So this is pretty much the same as step nine with those U-brackets. So this bottom piece here, you wanna make sure that your legs are gonna sit with the angle of the ground. Twelve will be the rest of the legs, and then we'll have to stand it up. And we'll see if I can do that on my own. Same concept with these legs. You want to make sure that they're going to sit correctly on the ground, not like that, but like that. So I finished step 12. I think I'm going to have to try and flip it up now to do the cross bracing. We're on step 13. That's installing the cross braces. So I'm going to install one male to one female, put the bolt in. I'm going to do that for all six, and then I'm going to tighten them afterwards. I apologize for switching up the angles. Working so far away, it's uh, now 102 out here, so it's getting pretty hot. So step 14 is the ladder brackets. So we got those in the bag here. And it's gonna go on the outside of the ladder. You're gonna actually have those facing in. So there's four of these ladder brackets. In this step, you really don't wanna tighten it down yet. Because when you start putting the cross bracing in, you want to make sure it's good. Step 15 is doing the same thing, but the leg brackets. So you have this, and then your pole. And this kind of goes on the other side of the pole here. 
and then your washer and your nut. And again, you want your bracket facing inward here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten them down a little bit, not all the way, so there's a little bit of play in it. So 16 is assembling and adding the cross braces here, so we'll go ahead and do that. Your cross bracing goes outside of your bracket, is what it looks like. And again, I wouldn't tighten it all the way down at the moment. So just as a heads up, you're not installing, so there's two extra uh, bolts here. You're not installing it, anything into the ladder in this step. I'm going to go ahead and install these to the top now, and that should use up all your bolts for this step. Before I get to 17, I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down a little bit. In 17, it's pretty much the same concept, just with the ladder. Really, at this point, you can go around and tighten everything if you want. 18 wants me to go ahead and put the ground stakes in to secure the legs and the ladder. I'm not going to do that at this point because it's not where I want it. I'll just be safe up there. 19 goes into the seat, so we'll go ahead and jump into that. This is what everyone said gave them the biggest heartburn when I read the reviews, so we'll see how difficult it is to do this here. Alright, so what I'm going to do here, and I think it'll work, is I only put in one bolt here on the far right. I'm just going to try and... Get this up on top. There we go. That made that a little bit easier there. So let's go ahead and get a couple bolts into here. So now we should be able to just kind of slide these down and stretch it out a little bit, maybe. Yep, there we go. So maybe that's kind of the idea is doing one bolt at a time on each side. Step 20 is taking these two seat support bars and installing them. So step 21 is installing the upper seat posts onto the seat bracket. Twenty-two is to hoist the seat up there, either using a hoist rope or have somebody help you out. There you have it, the game winner 10-foot tripod stand. You can lift it up like this for bow hunting, or if you want to use it as a gun or a rifle rest, you can do that as well. It took about four hours, three to four hours to do this. And I did it by myself, so it wasn't too bad. So as you can see, I've got it set up here. I'm going to lower this down because this seems a little high for what I would want. And so you just pull these pins out here. You can have it sitting there or if you're in a bow hunt, just flip it back and you can get your shot off right here. You can stand up in it. So it's pretty spacious, pretty good for 170 bucks.